Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. Today we are going to continue experiencing the beauty of South Africa with Hayden Quinn. Remember, this is an article about a TV show、right. on TLC, which is entitled. Hayden Quinn, South Africa. So last time we talked about where he goes in South Africa. I think、uh, he was going to Cape Town there、uh-huh. and some neighborhoods there. Boykop, I hope I said that right. And he cooked something on top of a mountain there, and he got to enjoy a sunset at the end of the day. Yeah, spectacular sunset. This is a great place to go. Any time a particular location is voted as being one of the the wonders of the world, you know that it's pretty amazing because this Earth has so many places that I would love to see. I'm probably not going to get a chance to see everything.、Uh, it costs quite a bit to travel, as you all know, and we have jobs. But this is some place that、uh, you might want to put on your list. We call it. Sometimes we call it a bucket list, the places or things you want to do before you kick the bucket, which means to pass away or to die.、Um, and we all have different things on our bucket list. This might be a good one for you.、Um, so it is located in、uh, the Cape Town area, but you go up by cable car. Kind of like our cable car here to Malcong, that's a cable car. You go up to the top of something called Table Mountain, and that's、uh, a pretty spectacular view. You can look out onto Cape Town from there. Indeed. So we're gonna go to some other places in South、uh-huh. Africa on this TV show in today's lesson. So let's get to it. Let's read the entire contents of our lesson right now. The next destination on Hayden's route is the fishing village of Pater Noster on the west coast. The locals there say every 45 minutes nothing happens, reflecting the town's relaxed lifestyle. Hayden accompanies restaurant owner Kobus van der Merve on an early morning mission to harvest mussels straight from the rocks on the shore. Later, he goes out with some resident fishermen. And manages to catch a Hottentot fish. When he and Cobus meet again at a beachside campsite, the two use their catches from the day to make mussels cooked in beer and fish roasted over wild herbs on an open fire. Sharing the meal with the fishermen while taking in the ocean view makes for a cozy evening. After Peter Noster, Hayden heads to Stellenbosch. A region famous for its wine and Afrikaans culture. After admiring a magnificent monument dedicated to the Afrikaans language, our host meets up with Fritz Scone, baker and co-owner at the Scone de Compania Market. Fritz shows him how to make moss balitis, sweet buns that use grape juice instead of yeast to make the dough rise. Hayden's next stops are two farms in the area. Both focused on local produce and eco-friendly practices, he collects juicy tomatoes and a unique native herb, and then meets again with Fritz to cook up some delicious potbrood, pot bread, and a salad using the fresh tomatoes and herbs. The feast plus new friends to enjoy it with brings a satisfying close to Hayden's time in Stellenbosch. If you want to follow Hayden on the rest of his journey through stunning South Africa. Check out Hayden Quinn South Africa on TLC this November. Okay, guys, let's get started. It's day two in our TLC unit, and of course, the TV show is、uh, Hayden Quinn South Africa, and he's an Australian chef. Who's on a big adventure, and he's taking us along with him. It's an easier way to travel if you just get to sit in your chair at home and watch TV. It's also a lot cheaper, isn't it? So here we are, the next destination on Hayden's route. That's the path he's going to go on. Is the fishing village of Paternoster on the western coast. Pater Noster.、Uh, the locals there have a really funny saying.、Uh, this is a quote or a saying that they like to kind of laugh with their friends about. It says, "Every forty-five minutes, nothing happens." <laughs> I think what's funny is they actually pick forty-five minutes.、Mm. Why not an hour? 
you know, or a day.、Uh, it sounds like a pretty, as we describe it, a pretty sleepy town. A sleepy town is just a town where there's not a lot of activity.、Uh, probably college students would find this. Particular location, boring. There probably aren't a lot of things to do for activities. Although sometimes just having a vacation in one of these sleepy towns is nice. Can be nice if、uh, people aren't pestering you too much for stuff. But in any case, I think it's sort of like every forty-five minutes. Then you expect them to say a whale jumps out of the water <laughs> or a flock of seagulls、yeah. takes off and fills the sky. But no, every forty-five minutes. Nothing happened. It really made me laugh out loud when I first saw it, or first、yeah. heard you read it, because I thought, "Oh my gosh, that's funny." You expect something exciting, you do. Pretty clever indeed. <laughs> But that again reflects the town's relaxed lifestyle. They're probably、yeah. proud of that. People can just hang out and be thankful that they're alive. Hayden accompanies restaurant owner Kobus Fonder Merve on an early morning mission to harvest mussels straight from the rocks on the shore.、Hmm. So this guy's got a. Long、uh, Afrikaans or Dutch name or something, so we're just going to call him Kobus. Okay, about that? cool. So he goes <laughs> with Kobus. He accompanies him. He goes with him on an early morning mission、uh, to go to the rocks there on the shore, and they're looking for mussels.、Uh, mussel, of course, in this spelling here refers to a kind of crustacean that、uh, likes to hang out on rocks. Has a hard shell around it. Yeah, it has a shell,、yeah. and I guess you can eat them. I'm sure mussels are quite common here in. Taiwan. So indeed, you got to go down to the rocks to look for those mussels. Do not confuse this word with mussels in your body. M u s c l e. Yeah, the G row. Yeah, yeah. your G row. That's mussels, <laughs> but here it's a different spelling, exactly the same pronunciation. True. But it means something different. Again, it's a kind of creature with a shell that lives on rocks. And later he goes out with some resident fishermen and manages to catch a Hottentot fish. Whatever that is, <laughs> I've never heard of a hot and hot fish,、uh, but you know there are lots of creatures that、uh, only live in certain parts of the world,、uh, unless they're brought over to a new area, which sometimes happens. The two use their catches from the day to make mussels cooked in beer and fish roasted over wild herbs on an open fire.、Um, I think I had my first mussels when I went to France a couple years ago with a best friend. She loves seafood. I didn't really love the mussels. They kind of、okay. taste like o- oysters. They're slimy. Slimy means it's really slick.、Um, the texture of the mussel was kind of gross for me. I didn't enjoy it. But、uh, a lot of people love it. They're very popular in Italy, France, not so much England. But、uh, yeah, if you have an area in your country by the sea, a lot of people will,、uh, you know. Fish for them. Harvest these mussels. Have you had mussels? No, not that I know of. I may have here in Taiwan. Sometimes people take me out and、uh, you know throw food in front of my face, and they tell、Maybe、me what it is in、yeah. Chinese,、You're、and I、like, don't、what? quite know what that means. But okay, whatever. <laughs> to be polite, I'll eat it. And、uh, so maybe I have. I don't know. They're like the size of、uh, a large, you know, shukui, but they open up as you steam them or cook them a little bit, and then you eat kind of a slimy. Creature inside. Okay, fair enough. That sounds、uh, very nutritious. And、there. it's popular with beer for some reason. They cook it in beer. Okay, I wonder if that's la or something. Maybe it's similar to that. I don't know. But in any case, here they get this hot and hot fish, and then Hayden rather meets Hayden. again with Cobus at a beachside campsite, and the two use their catches from the day to make mussels cooked in beer and fish roasted over wild herbs. On an open fire. So, if you go hunting or if you go fishing, the stuff you catch is referred to as your catch. A general word for all the things that you caught. If you caught ten fish、yeah. fishing in the ocean, that's your catch. So they take their catches,、uh, you know, Hayden's catch and Cobus's catch, and they get together and they make a dish using those ingredients. Oh, that's fun. It sounds like fun. They use the mussels, which are cooked in beer, and then they've got fish roasted. 
over wild herb. And I did want to say here, herbs are like spices, but it usually refers to,、uh, you know, plants, the leaves, maybe、mm-hmm. the branches and stuff、mm-hmm. like that. Some people say herbs, some people say herbs. It kind of depends on where you are. I say herbs myself.、Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you say, herbs? I、too? think the majority of America says herbs, but if you go over to the UK, you're going to hear herbs only. They do not say herbs. Okay.、Uh, listen to cooking shows. It's kind of funny. At first, I was like, "Are they saying herbs?" But yeah, they do. They like herbs over there. So roasting something always tastes really good.、Uh, it's over an open fire,、uh, which means they really don't have much of a, you know, they don't have a cooking top there, or they don't have a, a, a place set up even to barbecue on a grill. It's an open fire, and they're sharing the meal with the fishermen while taking in. The ocean view, and it makes for a cozy evening. So you know we use roast when we use when we're cooking something over an open flame, but we also use it, guys, when we're cooking something in an oven for a long time. You know, for example, on Sunday, my mom would always cook a beef roast, and you cook it a long time so it gets more tender.、Um, here, they're roasting over a, an open fire, so you have to know what you're doing to do this. They're sharing the meal with the fishermen who help them, and if you take in a view. And that's how we're using this verb phrase. Take it in. It just means you see it, you appreciate it. Sometimes we'll say, "Yeah, when I take in a movie this weekend," instead of saying, "Oh, I'm going to go see a film this weekend." I'm going to take in something so you can enjoy and see something, especially something that's entertaining, by taking it in. What else do we use "take in" though? With we use it for other things.、Uh, well, you could take in your suit maybe if you bought a suit and it's too big for you, so you can have it reduced、maybe、in the size. Maybe the waist is in, too big, yeah. Right, or you have something outside and you take it inside the house. How about if you find a, a cat or a dog without a home?、Mm. You can take in that pet. I'm going to take in the stray dog and feed him and take care of him. And maybe adopt him as a pet or yeah, something like、sure. that. So in this particular case, though, take in refers to. Just enjoying something, so、yeah. they just enjoy the ocean view and the sound of the waves lapping on the shore and stuff like that. Makes for a cozy evening. Cozy means comfortable, shufu.、Uh, you're just feeling nice and relaxed, yeah, and you're enjoying、nice. good food with good company. Nobody's having any arguments about politics or anything like that. They're just enjoying life to the fullest. Yeah, and it's not too hot, not too cold. You're just feeling great. We're going to talk more about his adventures.、Uh, that's Hayden Quinn, of course. But first, we're going to listen to our Chinese teacher for a while. Hi, everyone. My name is Jenny. Today, we're going to continue to look at the eighth unit. We're going to follow the path of the Great Hayden Quinn to the Golden Gate. Of course, he's a Chinese citizen. He's going to take us to see the beauty of nature. The most important thing is to eat. 不同的料理。首先呢，我们知道之前他已经带我们看了南非的几个不同的地方。这一天要带大家到另外一个景点，这是在西岸的一个渔村。提到西岸 ，on the western coast。我们要注意一下介系词的用法。文章里面呢，其实有几个地方都跟介系词有关。有时候呢，我们在学英文的时候，最伤脑筋的，倒不一定是关系代名词，不一定是连接词，而是介系词，因为有些是习惯的用法，你要另外背起来。好，那我们来看到这个渔村来呢，这里当地人有一句说法。Every forty-five minutes, nothing happens. 哎，很有趣的，这是跟大家表示说，四十分钟过了，还是没事，什么都没发生，风平浪静。其实这反映的是当地人生活方式非常的悠闲。好，那到这里来呢，他跟一位餐厅的老板。然后呢，约好他们一起在这个海边，在岸上收采集 mussels。哎，什么是 mussels？ 这种贝类呢？有人说它是贻贝，也可以翻成蛋菜。接下来我们要注意的接续词哦，看到了 on an early morning mission。on 刚刚我们就说接续词，有时候就是习惯用法。像你说，哎，你出任务 on a mission。
。接下来，他们呢在那里捕捉鱼，抓了鱼之后，当然就要料理咯。他们用啤酒来煮刚刚采集到的 mussels， 然后呢，他还把这些鱼放在火上面来烤。注意到了，这里 on an open fire， 这个 on 又是另外一个介系词，说它怎么个料理法 ？Roasted over wild herbs on an open fire， 听起来就是很好吃的样子。而这一个晚上，他们一起度过非常美好的观赏海景、舒适的夜晚。大家注意到这个地方 ，sharing the meal with the fishermen while taking in the ocean view. Wow, this、这个、ving sharing 开头的整个的片语其实是这句话的主词。那么这么长的主词，其实谈的也就是那么一件事，所以它是单数的主词。我们知道动名词片语引导出来的主词。当单数来用，所以重点就在于后面这个 makes， 这是单数动词。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, let's continue with our lesson. Remember, Hayden Quinn is in South Africa, and where we left off, he went to Paternoster,、uh -huh. uh, which is、Paternoster. a village. Paternoster, okay,、yeah. which is a seaside village, and he went there to cook some mussels over herbs on an open fire and stuff with his buddy there. And here in the next paragraph, after Paternoster. Uh, Hayden heads to Stellenbosch. I hope I said that right. A region famous for its wine and Afrikaans culture.、Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you're into wine, you probably have noticed that there are various wine-producing regions in the、mm -hmm. world. South Africa is one of them. It's a big one, yeah. That's、uh, a big one. So their wine is probably pretty good. And so this particular region of South Africa is called Stellenbosch. And it's famous for its wine and also its Afrikaans culture. Afrikaans here refers to a specific culture and language of South Africa. It、uh, came kind of from Dutch, and、uh, it's not the same thing as Dutch, but it's very similar. And it's now an official language in South Africa, along with、uh, Zulu and other native languages. Yeah, when I mention、uh, Charlize Theron, the actress,、um, this is actually the the language. She speaks Afrikaans, and you can online find some interviews where she、uh, gives us a little bit of the Afrikaans. It's interesting to to hear it. It's an interesting sounding language. So Afrikaans, yeah, it's culture, language.、Um, they're admiring. It says a magnificent monument. Magnificent is an adjective we use when something's. Really spectacular.、Uh, it it reminds me of something that's majestic or related to God or a king or a queen. You know, it's just magnificent. So don't use this for something that's like you know something you run into every day. That's not so great. But either a view, or maybe you've experienced some sort of dish that was really magnificent.、Um, I've described. Perhaps some plays or musicals that I've I've been to as being magnificent, but it has to be really pretty pretty spectacular to use that word. A monument is some sort. Usually, a monument is something、uh, carved out of stone or wood,、uh, but it's put up in remembrance of. Either a hero for that country, or a heroine, a woman who did something wonderful.、Um, it's something big enough that people stop and look at. And a lot of times, there are tourist attractions that people like to go and see. If you go to Washington D.C., we've got Washington Monument, was that really tall,、uh, straight thing that goes up in the air. We've also got the Abraham Lincoln Monument, where you can walk inside. Here we've got the.、Uh, um, I try to say in English.、So、I say in Chinese all the time. Sun Yat-sen Memorial Hall, where you can go in, and he's sitting on that big chair. That's a monument as well. Okay, so in this particular case, they've got this monument that is magnificent, and it's dedicated to the Afrikaans language. So that's who it's dedicated to.、Uh, a book can be dedicated to somebody,、uh -huh. for example. Sure. And our host here, Hayden Quinn, meets up with Fritz. 
Scon. It's uh, a hard a, one. Yeah,、uh, I had a Miss <laughs> Miss、uh, Schon in high school. Mrs. Schon, which actually. is Schon in German. Ah,、uh, right.、Uh, so I don't know if she was the German or the Dutch or the Afrikaans or whatever.、Probably. But、uh, yeah. in any case, here we're pronouncing it as Fritz Scon, <laughs> and he's a baker who makes pastries, and he's co-owner. At a market here called Scone de Compagna, I hope I said that right.、Cool. And Fritz shows him how to make something called. Let me see if I got the、uh, pronunciation here. Mosbolites, mosbolites. Yeah. Okay. And what is、That's、that? It. Well, it's a dish of sweet buns that use grape juice instead of yeast to make the dough rise. So yeah, if you're baking bread, usually you use yeast、mm-hmm. to make the dough rise to make it kind of fluffy, you know. P- puff up. Kind of Yeah. Puff up, you know. But in this particular case, I guess they use grape juice, and that, of course, is going to produce a different effect. Dough is min tuan in Chinese.、Mm-hmm. It's just when you mix the flour and the water and other ingredients, and you knead it with your hands, and then you're ready to go to put it in the oven and bake something. Yeah, I'm shocked that、uh, grape juice has the same effect as yeast, which is a fungus、uh, that is used to make. Bread rise. It makes your bread a lighter, fluffier, just nicer. But it's harder to、uh, to make it. Sometimes you don't get it to rise enough. Anyway,、mm. bread's not easy to make. That's all I'm saying. So here、um, they're going to be hanging out with this baker. Which, of course, we all love baked goods. Hayden's next stops are two farms in the area. Both of these farms focus on local produce. Remember, I said produce could be vegetables or fruit, and eco-friendly practices. So this is something that's very popular, especially currently. He collects juicy tomatoes and a unique. Native herb. If it's native to that area, that's that just means that where that's where it was originally found. Sometimes those herbs travel around the globe, as you know, and people start planting them in other places. But、uh, it's a unique native herb, probably meaning we haven't tasted it before. I'm thinking. And then he meets again with Fritz to cook up some delicious pot brewed or pot bread. In parentheses, and a salad using the fresh tomatoes and herbs. This sounds so delicious. I'm hungry. Yep,、uh, they're doing lots of cooking there.、Yeah. Hopefully, some of those ingredients are available locally here in Taiwan, so you can try your hand、yeah. at cooking some South African dishes there. Be fun, huh? And the feast plus new friends to enjoy it with brings a satisfying close to Hayden's time in Stellenbosch. Okay, so this is a feast, a big meal that you have, of course. If somebody gets married, you're going to have a big feast afterwards. True. That's usually referred to as a wedding banquet,、mm-hmm. but you could also call that a feast—just a big meal that lots of people participate in. So he's got this feast. He's also got the new friends to enjoy it with. So that all brings a satisfying close. To Hayden's time in this region of South Africa that is known for producing wine, and to satisfy here just means you're、uh, okay with everything. You're not complaining about anything. What you've received makes you happy. It makes you satisfied, and you don't want more. So yes, it's satisfying. You can have a satisfying meal if you go to your favorite restaurant. Yes, the food was good. I'm full. I'm very satisfied. I have nothing to complain about. Yeah, I, I wanted to mention. Too, we use feast to talk about something that isn't related to food. If you're looking at something that's just beautiful, you could say it's a feast for your eyes, or you can also use it as a verb. Feast, feast your eyes on this, or you know,、uh, we use that in a way that's not literal; it's figurative. But usually, a feast、uh, would be something. That we'd use to describe our Thanksgiving dinner in America. There's so much food you could eat for days and days. I think Chinese New Year's Eve is a feast as well.、Mm-hmm. Uh, people produce a lot of delicious food,、um, and you get fat eating it all. So this sounds like kind of a great、uh, way to check out South Africa. Most of us won't get a chance to go there personally, so tune in to TLC. You can see what else Hayden and the rest of his、uh, gang get up to as they journey through stunning South Africa. You're gonna want to check it out. Tune in to TLC, and it's on this November. We're in November now, so better check it out quickly. Right now, we're out of time, and we're gonna listen one more time to our Chinese teacher, and then we'll be back to say goodbye. 
，现在 Hayden 又要带我们往别的地方走了，他就要带我们到另外一个是以葡萄酒和非洲荷兰文化闻名的地区。那在这里，他说到他们有看到一个纪念碑 （monument）。A magnificent monument. 这个宏伟的纪念碑。然后我们看到在 monument 后面有一个 dedicated to. 好 dedicated. 当然我们表示是献给。那也就是为了来纪念谁的。这里为什么用过去分词呢？因为其实它是 which was dedicated to. 好，换句话说，你把过去分词保留下来就好，其他的地方其实就省略了、简化了。那我们再来往下读，嗯，我们看到这里还是要谈谈料理，因为呢，他们在这里是要做烤饼圈。那什么叫烤饼圈呢？原来比较特别的就是，哎，他们竟然是不用酵母来发酵，而是用葡萄汁来发酵的这种甜面包。好，最后这边这一段。又有另外一个地方要去哦。Hayden 带我们到这里的农场，这里有两个农场，而这两个农场呢，主要就是在看这边的农产品，还有他们如何的实践环保精神，所以说是 eco-friendly practices。嗯，在这里他们要煮的东西又是不同的料理了。这边他就提到了。The feast plus new friends to enjoy at West. Oh, 看到了吗？说这是一场飨宴，但是重点是 plus 加上什么？哎，有好朋友，有新朋友一起享用。大家想想 ，to enjoy at West 为什么要保留这个 w i t h 呢？当然，我们晓得，其实 to 后面这个不定词片语，哎，它要修饰的对象。就是前面的 new friends. 换句话说 enjoy the feast with new friends. 所以你的 w i t h 可不能省略哦，不然的话你就没办法哎跟前面的 new friends 接在一起了。好，我们跟着 Hayden 走了这么多南非的地方，哎，看到了他怎么样煮美食，欣赏风光。如果你对这个节目也有兴趣的话，那么就看今年十一月。TLC 旅游生活频道的，嗯，海灯的南非好滋味。我们今天就到这边结束，下次见。Okay, that brings us to the end of our lesson for today. Thank you for joining us and enjoy your travels to South Africa, whether you actually go or whether you watch this program on TLC. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. Bye.